So now we are going to study the impact of commodity taxes. In particular, we would like to answer these six questions. What happens to the quantity sold after the tax? What happens after the tax to the price received by the seller? That is the net price of the seller and the price paid by the buyer. That is the net price of the buyer. How is the burden distributed between the buyers and sellers? In this video, we'll take the first three questions and in the rest of the videos, we'll look at the other ones. So let's begin. Suppose that this is the market for apples. This is the demand and supply. The equilibrium quantity is 700 apples and the equilibrium price is $2. Now suppose the government imposes $1 tax, let's say it does that on the suppliers, on the sellers. So every time they sell an apple, they got to pay $1 to the government. How will that affect the supply curve? Now a tax can be thought of as an increase in cost of production. So the cost of producing an apple has just gone up by $1 for the apple producers. So an increase in cost of production always decreases supply or shifts the supply curve to the left. So that's exactly what's going to happen. What's more, in this particular case, we know how much exactly the supply curve is going to shift by. The vertical distance between the new supply curve and the old supply curve is going to be exactly a dollar. So, for example, at the quantity of 700, the height of the supply curve was $2. Now it's going to be $3. So the difference between the two, the vertical distance, is always going to be a dollar. Why is it going to be exactly a dollar? Because recall that the height of the supply curve represents the minimum price that producers want. Earlier, they wanted $2. But now, because they got to pay $1 tax to the government, they want to pass on that $1 in form of higher prices to the consumers. So they will want $3 in order to continue supply 700 apples. But will consumers pay $3 for apples? Well, the demand curve, look at the demand curve. The demand curve tells us that at the price of $3, the consumers are not going to be demanding 700. They're going to be demanding fewer units. So in other words, if producers were to actually increase the price to $3, then there would be a surplus in the market equal to the difference between what the consumers want and what the suppliers are willing to supply. And of course, a surplus cannot persist in a free market. And so the price would begin to fall and how much would the price fall? Well, it would fall till the new supply curve intersected the demand curve. So this would be the equilibrium point. And at that equilibrium point, let's say that the equilibrium price is 265 and the equilibrium quantity is 500. So as you can see, the equilibrium quantity has fallen from 700 to 500. And this is always true a tax, some commodity tax, always reduces the quantity sold. Now what happens to the price paid by the buyer? Well, the market price was $2 before. Now the market price has risen to $2.65. That's what the buyer has got to pay. So as a result, we conclude that the tax has increased the price paid by the buyer by 65 cents. Note that the increase in price of the apple is just 65 cents and not the whole dollar. Okay, and one dollar increase in tax increased the price of apple by less than a dollar. Okay, so we have to keep this in mind. Uh, even though the suppliers would have liked to raise it by one dollar, they were not able to because of the way demand and supply works. But in general, we can say that a tax increases the price paid by the buyers. What about the price received by the seller? Now, before the tax, suppliers used to get $2. After the tax, the equilibrium price rises to $2.65. And so that's what they collect from the consumer. But that's not the actual price they get to keep, right? Because they got to pay $1 tax to the government 
of this 265 that they get. So they are left with 265 minus $1, which is $1.65. And that's actually the net price that they receive, the price that they get to take home. As you can see, it's lower than the $2 price they used to get to take home before the tax. And this is true in general. A tax usually reduces the price received by the sellers. So once again, a quick recap. Whenever there is a commodity tax, it reduces the quantity sold of that good. It increases the price paid by the buyers and it reduces the price received by the seller. Whenever there is a tax, the price paid by the buyer is different from the price received by the seller. And the difference between the two is exactly equal to the amount of the tax, which is $1. How is the burden of the tax distributed between the consumers and the producers? So let's calculate the burden. Now, before the tax, consumers used to pay the old equilibrium price of $2. After the tax, what do they pay? After the tax, the equilibrium price rises to $2.65, so that's what they pay. How much more are they paying? They are paying $0.65 cents more for their apples, so that's their burden of the tax. That's how much they are made worse off due to the tax. This distance between 265 and two dollars it represents the burden of the tax what about the producers the sellers before the tax they used to get the equilibrium price of two dollars after the tax equilibrium price increased to 265 but then they had to pay one dollar to the government so they get to take home only 165 so their net price has actually fallen by 35 cents so that's their burden of the tax. That's how much they are made worse off due to the tax. And this distance over here between the old price of $2 and the new price received of $165 represents their burden. So we got to remember that whenever there is a tax, even though it is imposed on just the producers, the burden of that tax who is going to be made worse off by that tax is actually shared by the consumers and the producers. Now, take pay attention to this line segment that consists of that re, that consists of the consumer's burden and the producer's burden. Okay, I'm going to shade it with yellow. This line segment is very important. Okay, we call this the tax wedge. And what is the significance of the tax wedge? Well, that's the topic of the next video.